mind and all that, but you're still awake. Yes. That's the difference, they say. You know, all the same sense ages. And then we discussed it that if somebody has become self-realized, they are in samadhi 24-7. They never forget that the oneness. Other people, we, they, okay, a little bit, I'm here in samadhi for a while, then I go back in the world and I forget about that. So then that's a problem. Once you are in samadhi, there is no going back ever. Yeah, and, and the, the example given is that suppose once you learn a language, can you be illiterate again of that language? No. So once kisi ne wo establish ho gaya na, fir wo buddhu nahi ban sakta wapis. That's what, that's what but, but, example But is. you still have to practice to keep it up to that level. Even if you become self-realized, you still continue to do meditation to keep your level there. Well, uh, uh, technically speaking, the one who has become self-realized, he doesn't need to do absolutely anything the okay. only reason he does it because of compassion for others <laughs> you know he doesn't have to do a, a particular action the reason he does because it's like kya problem hai? when we are working and all that our mind is working and then when i'm not working my mind is still working but his mind is like a tool so job is done now he'll automatically go in samadhi he doesn't need to run around he doesn't he will sit that's why you see shankar bhagwan <laughs> Whoever has seen the Devo Ke Dev Mahadev will see every time he's sitting in the Samadhi, somebody comes, oh Shankar Bhagavan, then he opens his eyes and talks. Again, he goes back in Samadhi. You know? So what but you're saying. Even Ram Krishna said that uh, he wasn't doing any more puja after a while. They don't need to. Yeah. But if they want he to, said... they can because they have find joy in it. It's there in the body still, right? Body has certain yeah. we, we enjoy certain things. They enjoy doing puja, but they don't have to. Yeah. You know? If you have already it's like, um, I, I already got the entire world. Uh, then w why do I go after small, small things here and there? You know, world is my... Because the things in the body form, even they became self-realized, but they are still deep with the world and they are still in the body form. They have to continue doing that. That's my understanding. Maybe wrong. No, I did. you are true. Uh, yeah, the word used in Bhagavad Gita is they do it for loka sangraha integrity of the world you know because it i we gave that example right that we have our body and if one part of our body is hurting what does the rest of the body do it tries to help to get it over with that's how they look at it when they see us you know in in a sorrow and this and that because they have they just don't know who they are that's why they're doing it like I, I feel like Sadhguru is a self-realized soul, but he emphasized so much. He says, I still um, do so much meditation at night. So when he's doing at night, he's not doing for Lok Kalyan. He's doing for himself, right? No, not, I mean, it depends on what you want to say. It, it, Bhagavad Gita, he will explain, there is a word called Krita Kritya. Whoever knows a little bit of Hindi, Krita Kritya means I, I've got the highest goal. I don't need to do anything more, but the, they do it for Loka Sangraha. Okay. It, it's going to come in this chapter only, that Loka Sangraha word. So yeah, he, they, they actually, Krishna says, I don't have to do anything. Yes, Krishna I says the same thing. Example. Yeah. He but said, I don't need Krishna to do anything. Used to go in samadhi just because he heard some God's name or something. So it's not like he had to do it. He just went in samadhi. So once you reach that stage, you know, you don't need to uh, make an effort to do anything. I think that, that what, what you are saying, uh, Kamlaji, is that these people don't sit around, but they are never stressed like us. They do so much yeah, more work. Because they are so relaxed because unko kuch gain, they don't have any personal gain in anything. They have already yeah. gained the highest. Actually, we are debating at the wrong point. When we'll reach there, then we'll worry about it. <laughs> you know, you, the problem is, a, not problem. The truth is when we reach there, we won't have any uh, question or problems. <laughs> because we are on this side, we, are, we debate. You know, what kya debate? Kya karna hai, you know? Why don't we find somebody who's there and then we talk to him? We won't understand. It's like Why a dog. Very strong desire. If you know somebody, I want to meet that person. You will I never. You, the person may be right next to you. Soul. 
And that will always be and then you won't get wavered. Say, what, what no, did you say? No. Sneha? No, what happens is what when you somebody Sneha. like that, you have no yeah. questions. Yeah. I've gone through that. So I said, oh, I'll ask this, I'll ask this. And when I saw this lady, I had no questions. Because you just get so much of bliss in you that you cannot ask, your mouth won't open. Yeah, that's why you have to be in that blissful state. And when you're in the blissful state, you're connected to your soul. And when you're connected to your soul, then you're only taking decision from the soul, not from the mind. Right. You know, this blissful state, uh, I, I remember this so, because I always learn more from examples. So it seems that Vivekananji, when he was a young boy, so he was just like any other teenager. In the beginning, you know, he wanted this and he wanted that. And and then, so his guru said, uh, Ramakrishna Ji said, uh, okay, you want this, this, this. Why don't you tell the Devi Ma? She can give you. She has the power. So he said, yeah. oh, how do I approach Devi Ma? He said, just sit and think about Devi Ma. So then he sat down and he started thinking about Devi Ma. And then he, after some time, he opened his eyes. And so Guru ne pucha, mang liya. To bola, nahi, main to bhul gaya mangna. You know, to bola, okay, try next time. So I said, do tin din, do tin din. So he's saying that after for a week or so, he said, for some reason, you know, when I'm thinking of Devi Ma, I'm in so much in peace, I don't remember my desires. <laughs> I thought that was such a beautiful example because he started finding some other bliss. And in that bliss, he had no questions, no nothing. And uh, that's how he got him into meditation. That's one of the, you know, anecdotes. I don't know. Joe knows more about it. But I thought well, it was beautiful. Right. No, that's a, that's a very good example. Yeah, yeah. That, hey, once he we... Wanted, uh, he wanted for his mother to uh, get a home and food. Because father had died and everybody cheated them out of all the property. Yeah. So, so then Ram Krishna blessed him in the end that it will happen, but he couldn't ask the Kali. He couldn't ask because he was so much in bliss. Yeah. He, every time he forgot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's read a little bit at least so that we don't break our tradition here. Yeah. So the verse is uh, 90. Previous one, we already discussed what we did. So here, it's a path. This is a very good, I don't know if, if you guys want to stay and finish this. Uh, or what, but at least one little bit we should do, and then you let me know. Heya ge, heya ge ya pya vakyani, heya ge ya pya vakyani, vigneyanya grayanataha, vigneyanya grayanataha, te shamanyatra vigneyat. Tesha manyatra vigneya Upalambha strishu smataha Upalambha strishu smataha So here it says Heya means things to be avoided or rejected Gneya means object to be known or realized Apya is to be accepted or attained Vakyani is thoughts which are to be rendered ineffective Vigneyani things to be known well Agrayanataha at the very beginning, Tesham of them among these. Tesham means of them or among these. Anyatra is other than Vigneyat to be realized, meaning Brahman or God. Upalambha exist only in imaginations. Trishu three Smrtaha is are considered. This one he has summarized the whole path. What we need to do to get there. That's why this is such an important verse. So, who wants to read? Who has a book actually? Miraji, you have it, no? Huh? The four things to be known in the very beginning are one, the things to be avoided, two, the object to be realized, three, things to be attained or accepted, and four, Thoughts to be rendered ineffective. Among these four, all the rest, excepting what is to be realized, in other words, Brahman, exist only as imaginations. So even though he's saying here that there are four different things he talked about, and the only most important thing, the, the what is to be realized is the Brahman or the substratum or the Turiya state, Rest three only uh, exist in imagination, but for our sake, 
विल हैव टू डू यू नो जैसे बोलते हैं ना कांटे से ही कांटा निकाला जा सकता है सो वी कैन नॉट अवॉइड बींग इन दिस वर्ल्ड एंड डूइंग द कर्म योगा एंड ऑल दैट दैट्स वाई वी नीड गाइडेंस बिकॉज अगर खाली सोचने से उस स्टेट में हम लोग पहुँच जाते तो हम लोग सभी पहुँच जाते हैं बिकॉज वी नो बट वी नो वी आर नॉट देयर दैट्स वाई वी नीड दिस पैथ तो जस्ट टू रिमेंबर दैट ओके नाउ टेल मी वन थिंग हाउ म यू गाइज हैव एनी एनी बडी इज लाइक एन हरी टू गो और शुड वी फिनिश दिस दिस वन टाइम इज ट्वेल्व फोर्टी आई कैन वेट अंटिल ट्वेल्व फिफ्टी फाइव इज एवरीबडी ओके विथ फिनिशिंग इट दिस दिस टाइम इंपॉर्टेंट so just want to make sure everybody heard you right oh because in my book it says i m p o r t e n t no it is i m p o t e n t that's the correct uh, uh it means huh it important. should be important meaning it has become like nishkriya it, it's not have any power importancy ho gayi ha totally changes the meaning yeah, yeah it does that's the correct it. meaning important ha huh? thus a teacher must consider it his duty not only to instruct the students in the highest philosophical truths but also to help him now and then to remember ideas of pure common sense so that he may not get himself distracted away into the ambush of idiocy and stupidity in order to achieve any secret aim in life whether our actions be in the fields of the domestic political economic national and international the individual or the community will have to have certainly a good grasp of these four items they must know their goal they must know what are the values that are against the achievement of their desired goal they must know what are the values that they must develop in themselves to fulfill their ambition and lastly they must also definitely for themselves sorry they must also know definitely for themselves what are the false traits of culture in them at present to be made ineffective through diligent practice so you saw that how he is telling you what what the your goal is what you should avoid what you should do all those things are common sense but in spiritual path is very easy to get sidetracked and you know get stuck into the wrong methods and all that and that's why people don't progress and then religion has become important because of you know common sense is gone that's why sometimes wo jo purane purane riti riwaj hai na that that don't kind of uh, have any good use in today's world people keep st- still doing that you know those are a uh, very simple examples of how that's not what religion is all about religion is not about just following tradition it's about getting higher so it's like now i have a aeroplane but i still take some khatara gaadi to go somewhere i don't need to do that right i can sit in aeroplane so common sense is very important mm. in fact all schemes of living and charters of freedom programs of growth and constitutions of governments will have to consider these four items and to the degree they have neglected any one of these aspects to that degree their activities have been a failure that scheme alone can be a success in any walk of life which thoroughly and efficiently considers these four avenues of success so you know one of the another main thing over here is that he he talks about the highest and then he goes down the step okay because we have talked about that's the upanishadic style that okay highest is here if you got it great you already are there but if you are if you didn't get it this this is a path this is what you should be focusing on and so that's the style he is using number 1 and number 2 whatever works in the spiritual world the same thing works in this material world also that's what he's saying same principles apply because it's not something like 
unscientific or I don't know what. No, same exact thing. If you do, if you are trying to gain a material thing and if you follow those four, you will reach your goal. That's what he's saying. As seeker of spiritual perfection, we need not read into this stanza such a wide application. But I am deliberately discoursing upon it only to attract your attention. You should not think that old philosophers of India were impotent men who could not plan material world of success. This has been a copy belief of hasty critics of India, especially in our generation, when we are neither fed with the best in our culture, nor with the best in the Western civilization. Fed as we are mentally and intellectually with the rubbish and the refuse of the world's cultural transactions, we have grown up to be a generation lacking in breed as well as in health, but suffering physically, mentally, and intellectually from cultural diseases. You know, a kahawat in Hindi or Punjabi may dhobi da kutta na gharda na ghadda, right? <laughs> That's what he's telling you. That is that we are going to do both of us. So he's just saying the rise above it because one of the accusation is that you know, so, all people are sadhu sanyasi, you know, they sit in the cave and then don't do anything and we have to work in the world. He's saying no. You know, self-realized person can be in the marketplace and do everything and bring the standard of living and standard of life up, up actually. You know, and then this is just uh, some thought came to my mind that happened in our study group that some new person joined and then they said, I don't understand this sadhu mahatma and all that, you know, they do this puja, that puja, whatever, or uh, this pravachan, that pravachan. Why don't they just go and open hospitals and, uh, you know, feed the poor? Why they're not doing that? So, you know, we were also new and we didn't know, you know, huh, maybe that they're right. And our teacher said, what would you rather do? with a person, would you rather raise his standard of life to certain extent that he can handle anything and take care of himself? Or you just want to go feed a little bit? So this what, what the sadhu mahatmas are doing is lot higher stuff they are doing that we don't look at it. You know, that they are trying to make you such a strong person, nothing bothers you and you can handle anything and you can help 20 other people too. And I said, oh, now I get it, that's what they are trying to do, you know? So that's what here he's talking about, that if you follow this rule, you will get both material prosperity as well as a spiritual prosperity. Hmm? So that reminds me of the saying that if you feed a man, if you give a man a fish, you feed him one meal. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. Yes, perfect. So. Perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our ulcerated personalities provide us with an <coughs> of sick hearts and lacerated intellects. This stanza should at least make us understand that even while discussing absolute idealism, here is Gaurapradha giving us a scheme of thought which can, if applied properly, serve as a golden key to let the suffering world out into the ampler fields of a joyous and peaceful existence. From the philosophical aspect of it, we shall try to discuss now. Okay, so now he's saying that from a philosophical aspect, these are the things we should do. Now he's going to go into the, this. Okay. The goal of life, as has been pointed out, is the fourth plane of consciousness or God consciousness. And in order to reach that goal, we must not only know the theory of the fourth plane, but also must necessarily practice ourselves in avoiding such values of life which are dangerous to it. And through diligent practice and consistent devotion to it, pursue a synthetic yoga of negating the cause and of asserting the truth. We must know the values of life to be developed through practice, and also we must know how to unwind the naughty vasanas in our mind through deliberate self-application so see how it, it's a bhagavad gita cup everything is coming over here okay i should know my goal and then I, sh I should know how to reach that goal what to avoid what to develop and you know that's what the path and now he's going to open it up what those things are hmm. the things to be avoided are the three planes of consciousness identifying with which we develop our sense of ego the object to be realized is the fourth state, 
to be arrived at by an intelligent and conscious transcendence of the lower three. So he's talking about Mandukya. That's why he just said that the main goal is the Turiya state or the Samadhi or the consciousness that need to be realized and avoided. The, uh, these three states are just experience. So don't give too much importance to it. That's a that's just an overview of it. Now he's going to go more in detail how to go about it. Okay. Go ahead. Things to be attained are wisdom, innocence, and silence, while thought to be rendered ineffective are the fiendish animal instincts in us, such as attachment, hatred, passion, and so on. So here he's giving you that the things we need to uh, wisdom. Wisdom, is, and he's going to, maybe we should read the whole thing because he's going to open up even more what wisdom is, what innocence is, and what silence is, he's going to tell us. Okay, go ahead. In the above, according to Sri Shankara, things that are to be acquired are wisdom, childlike innocence, and silence. These are considered accessories of utmost importance for spiritual realization. Here, wisdom means the intellectual capacity to discriminate, which is to be developed through devotion, service to the teacher, and repeated listening to his words, ultimately to know that the entire Shastras are indicating a goal which is non-dual and eternal. So here he gave a very long sentence of what wisdom is. So we should not mistaken wisdom as, you know, trying to understand this uh, all the material things in the world. No, that's not what it is. It is a capacity to discriminate through devotion, service to the teacher and repeated listening to the words to know that, that the non-dual and eternal goal. That is wisdom he's telling you. True wisdom. Okay. And what is innocence? Innocence means here a childlike existence wherein egoism, vanity, attachment and hatred are the least predominant. So see how beautiful example he gave of innocence. What definition of innocence is when you don't have egoism, vanity, attachment, and hatred as predominant. You know, so you, and that's why I think Shankar Bhagwan ko bhole nath bolte na? Innocence, that's where it's coming that, you know, person who is innocent, usko dikhta bhi nahi hai kisi ki burai. Jaysa hum log judge karte na, falana bura hai, ye usko dikhai nahi deti hai uski burai. That's what it is, that innocence. Silence is meant here to indicate this inward silence of the mind during the rare moments of real meditation. So he said, no, those three things, wisdom, innocence, and silence. Silence, he's talking about the meditation. And meditation, you can call it samadhi. You can call it, you know, when, when your mind becomes balanced and quiet and all that. See how whole path he told you. Anybody who has any question how to get there here, Kamla ji had asked. Sorry, Uma, I really need to leave. So I will uh, leave at this point and I'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you so much for reading. And that we are we are finished also, but no problem. My pleasure. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. So this path is now given. And I think we all can, whoever has the book is lucky because they can go read it again. Because I think this is the most beautiful piece that I found which describes a path as beautifully as it can and we can see where we are lacking and we can put more effort there you know so any any question or should we close the class comment last comment before we close anyone everybody went into samadhi <laughs> oh I wish that was that easy mm -hmm. uh, actually what does mandukya mean Mandukya actually means like a frog. And there is a whole description he gave why, why it is a, a, a frog. And uh, if you, I can get you the book if you want. Um, but because right now, we, today we don't have a time. Another time I can go over it a little bit. What, what Mandukya, why he, they said Mandukya. And it's okay. I think yeah. It's yeah, that's what it means, a frog. And who has written the commentary? Uh, Gaudapad ji, it was... Um, um, guru ke guru of of Shankaracharya ji. So Shankaracharya ki guru or unke guru the Godpad ji. So he was a very die hard Vedantin, very hardcore. So he will just stick with the highest level. Whereas Shankaracharya was a little more mild. 
and Krishna Bhagwan is the sweetest. You know, he he takes care of everybody, no matter where you are. You know, so that's what it is. Okay, let's do the closing prayer. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashtu Dukha Bhagpave Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Okay, thank you everybody. Stay safe, happy, healthy and we will see you next week same time. Thank you much. Thank you so thank much. You very much thank you. Thank, thank you, Krishna Bhagwan. Because he's the one. Love you all. Jai Shri Krishna. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 B